most of us have been tenants at one time. Some of us have been landlords as well. But do you know what your rights are? So, Scott, you have been doing this forever. It's almost like you came out of the womb and started becoming a landlord. <laughs> you've got wow. so many properties. Um, and so you've done this many, many times, starting from when you were a kid. Yeah. I want to talk about how to choose a renter or what you need to look for, what the rights are on both sides of the story. Absolutely. And I think that's one of the greatest fears because I always tell people at some point, you know, if you are someone who's concerned about your finances and you mm -hmm. want to do well, owning real estate beyond just your primary residence is a fantastic way to build wealth. Mm -hmm. And the more properties, usually the better as long as you know what you're doing. But people are so scared of tenants. They're like, oh, what if I get nightmare tenants? Yes, right? what if you get nightmare well, I'm so tenants? Scared. Well, the truth is, typically, you're more likely to create a bad tenant than you are to get a bad tenant. Okay. And, and then what I say by that is, typically, if you know what you're doing and if you've learned how to be a landlord or a real estate investor, you'll have a proper vetting system in place. You'll be doing things like a tenant application. Mm -hmm. You'll be getting references. You can do a credit check. You can talk to an employer. If my tenants are young, like if I'm using students, for instance, as an example, I have a lot of student rentals, I'll get on the phone with their parents and I'll get their parents to sign the lease as a guarantor. Oh. So this removes a lot of the, you know, uh, this, this filters out a lot of the problems right at the beginning. Yeah. But it, that doesn't mean you're going to get the perfect person because I tell people the landlord is kind of the boss in this situation. You need to set the precedence for what the relationship will be like. So one of the best things you can do is you can use the law of reciprocity. And okay. what I mean by that is like if you've ever studied behavioral economics, there are certain things that we are all inherently driven towards or that can influence us. And one is the law of reciprocity, meaning when you give somebody something, they feel indebted to give you something back. So the best thing you can do when your tenant moves in is give them a gift, like a welcome package. Yeah. You know, not, nothing huge, just a card welcoming, welcoming to them to their home and, you know, maybe 20 to $40 gift, could be a bottle of wine, bouquet of flowers. When I started implementing that years ago, yeah. my tenant turnover went down, the condition mm -hmm. in which my places were returned to me was, uh, was significantly improved. In fact, I just had a tenant recently leave. Now, just full disclosure, I don't manage most of my properties anymore mm -hmm. myself. I've got property management teams in place, but I used to do it all myself. Yeah. Find the tenants, you know, cut the grass, do the renovations. And I had a guy leave recently. He's probably been a tenant of mine for 15 years. Wow. And my property manager called me and said, hey, Scott, you know, uh, I won't use his name, but he's like, so-and-so is leaving this property. And I uh, uh, just wanted to let you know, he left you something. I'm like, oh, that's hilarious, because I rented him the space 15 years ago. And I said, well, what is it? He said, it's a card and a bottle of wine, <laughs> which, is, which is what I what used to give my tenants them. when they moved in. And I yeah. said, oh, my gosh. I said, read the, read the card. And he opens it up. He's like, hey, Scott, thanks for being a great landlord. Here's a bottle of wine. If you don't like it, give it to your next tenants. <laughs> <laughs> Goes 15 a years. Way. He was still thinking about it. Still thinking about it. It sets it sets a precedent. Absolutely. I guess it says to them, this is the relationship that we are going to have, and you are going to elevate it to a certain place. Um, so you know they don't want to go in there and have a wild party it's, with their friends. Like the guy gave me a bottle a, of wine. It's easier to be a good landlord than it is to be a bad one. I'll yeah. tell you right now. And if you embrace it, yeah. you know people are scared of tenants. I, I'm to me, it's your customer. Like, whoever said, I want to open a business and be successful, but I don't want any customers. Mm -hmm. You're, that's crazy talk. Your tenant is your customer. Treat yeah. them well, the same service you would expect from any other business. And this, is, this can be a really rewarding experience. What if things do go sideways? Can you... Drag them out on the street and no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> like, go on, do yes. tell. What do you, do you have, do you have the right as a landlord to say, um, I don't want you to be my tenant anymore? <laughs> and what would they have to do for you to be able to remove them as a tenant? It's, it's messy. And uh, I'll be honest, I've done very few evictions mm -hmm. in my time as a landlord. And typically it comes down to people who can't pay rent for the most part. Yeah. There are other situations that arise. Uh, but I'm, I'm honest, like I have an honesty policy and I have uh, an addendum that I put with all my leases. No matter what, 
you know, country you're in, where you're doing rentals, the, the rules are slightly different. Okay. Um, and if it comes down to it, you'll have to abide by those standards, yeah. whatever act is in place. Okay. However, I always put in my own appendix, basically, with here are the other things that aren't covered, you know, that like, what, where can you keep your garbage? Because right. I have a lot of multi units. and. Who gets to use which side of the driveway? And yeah. you know, you can't keep your bike locked to the front porch. And just mm -hmm. all these little things that nobody thinks about until they're an issue. Yes. I've kind of captured them all. And uh, the eviction process, yeah, it's it's not pretty. It's and to, long and it's expensive, isn't it? It can be expensive and it, it can be really tough for the tenant because basically you've got somebody trying to kick you out of your house. Yeah. And it can be tough for the landlord because typically it's, it's a situation where the tenant isn't paying. Right. And I'll tell you, there's a couple situations that have been really successful for me where I've had issues with tenants <clears throat> and I've just come by the house with permission, sat down with them. I brought them listings of other properties that oh. are cheaper. Yeah. I said, here's three or four other properties that I found in the area yes. that you can actually afford to pay the rent yeah. because you're not paying me. You're already two months behind. Mm -hmm. I've already served you an eviction notice and we can you know, fight this process for a while. Um, or I will, I will basically you know, uh, leave you free and clear of what you owe me if you're gone in the next 30 days. And most of them will just walk away because they basically got a few months of free rent out of That's it. That's really good advice. Yeah. Bosses take note. If you want to get rid of an employee, show them the other jobs they can have. <laughs>